Good morning, everybody. Uh, Pastor Nate Borman here, one of the pastors at Mount Lebanon Lutheran Church. It's Saturday, um, and we're we're walking our way through the book of Proverbs. In fact, we're almost done. I'm still turning pages to get to the chapter I want to look at with you today. Um, we're walking our way through the book of Proverbs. We're wrapping it up on Monday, and then we're going to start a brand new series. Um, we're going to walk through the, the two letters that we have from Paul uh, to the Corinthians, and um, it's about the church, it's about the gospel, it's about Jesus, it's about living as Christians in this world, it's about living together with other people. Uh, so I'm really excited about diving into the book of Corinthians, um, the two letters that Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and um, the format I think is going to change a little bit. I'm going to try to shorten it down a little bit, uh, make the devotions a little bit shorter and more to the point, uh, less talking, uh, more, more just maybe short thoughts for you to take home uh, today. Um, Proverbs chapter 30, and let me read it to you, um, just a few verses, uh, verse, starting at verse 2, uh, this is, this isn't actually, Proverbs chapter 30 isn't actually Solomon, it's the sayings, if you look at verse 1, the sayings of Agur, uh, good morning Tracy, uh, this is what, what Agur says, he says, surely I am only a brute, uh, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One, and that's God. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have wrapped up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. You know, God's ways are so much higher than our ways. And, and you and I, we are so limited, <laughs> so limited when it comes to understanding God. I mean, you have to think about, about our own human frailty for just a moment. You have to think about it from the perspective that now our, our thinking has been totally messed up because of sin. Uh, you, you realize, don't you, that when Adam and Eve sinned, that everything about our way of thinking is now flawed and messed up. Our, our minds are, no longer process things or think about things in the right way. Um, in, in, in Genesis, where, where God speaks about, about human nature, uh, after the flood, God speaks about and says the human nature, the human mind is, is only inclined to evil all the time. Uh, the, the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. They are, we're going to look at this in Corinthians, they are foolishness to him. So just from a, from a human and, and a sinful perspective, our human minds are unable to accept the things that come from God, right? That's why Solomon, that's why Agur said, I was, all, I was a brute because like, it, like an animal, we approach God's things and we, they just don't. They're like, we're like idiots. We're like brutes before God. And, and that's with sin. But I think you have to back up from that and go back before, before the fall and the sin, back before Adam and Eve ate the fruit. And you have to realize even then, even before sin, did Adam and Eve really understand the things of God? Did they really understand fully and grasp everything that was God was doing? No. Uh, they didn't fully get it uh, because there are things uh, that, are only, that only belong to God. God didn't, didn't tell them everything. God didn't make everything known to them. So, so even, as, even if we were perfect... There are still going to be things about God that we don't understand. Agur says that. He says, who's gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? You know, it's the same kind of questions that God asks Job at the very end of Job, right? Were you there? <laughs> Did you see me do it? Did, do you have an understanding of all these things? Right? God, In a way, God puts us in our place when he asks, when he asks questions like that. Because he's saying, do you, do you really get it, right? And my point is that we, are, as human beings, when it comes to the things of God, we're, we're so limited. We're limited because of sin, because our, our minds, though they are a gift from God, they're still sinful. 
And even if they weren't, we still wouldn't be able to fit God. Uh, I would use a word like uh, the things of God are not irrational. That is, they don't, it's not that they're outside of reason, but they're above reason. Like because they're from God, they're supra-rational, they're above our reason. It's not that they're irrational, it's that they're above our reasoning and above our thinking. This is who God is. Right? The Trinity is not irrational, but it's above our reason. It's, it's beyond what we can understand. Uh, what God's doing in this world is not irrational, but it is beyond sometimes what we can understand. So, so that's, the, that's the first part of this. We, as human beings, we're so limited, and God in his wisdom, God in his planning, God in his working is beyond our reasoning. So how do we begin? How do we begin to understand God if he's way up here? You can't even see my hand. How do we begin to understand God if he's way up here? Well, it starts with, it starts with where, where Agur ended up. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. It, star, it starts with, with us trusting the word. It's a, it starts with us saying, God, this is what you said. Um, and and, and part, so as, as Christians, what we do with the Bible is we say God speaks here. And we say, God's, there, there's a both and an and. Sometimes there, sometimes, this is what I've learned, and uh, sometimes in the scriptures there are things that seem to be contradictory. And when we can't reconcile those two things, what we need to do is say, God says both this and God says that. And we let, as, as Christians who trust the Bible and trust the God of the Bible, we just let God's word be. Right? We don't, Solomon, he wards us, and it's not uh, Solomon, I keep saying that. Um, this is Agur, he says, don't add to his words. Right? We let God be. We let God's word be. We don't try to explain it away. We don't try to twist it and try to make it make sense. We just let it be. God says this. And I don't, we can say, I don't get it. It's above me. Uh, but we let God be. And we let God's word interpret and explain what's going on in this world. We don't try to make sense of what's going on in this world because truth is it's probably beyond us and above us. But we can use God's word to, as a filter and as a lens to view the world, right? Um, God's word, we can talk about worldview here, can't we? How do we view the world? How do we make sense of the world and our lives in this world? We, we use God's word, right? There, there is this simple truth that um, it's in Deuteronomy where Moses says this, he says, the hidden things belong to God, but the revealed things belong to us and our children. So what I'm saying is, we have to let the hidden things stay hidden. We have to be okay with that. That's part of faith. Right? We live by trusting in God who keeps hidden things hidden. But where God has revealed things, where God has re made things known to us, and I'm talking about the Bible, where God has made things known to us, then we dive in, we dig in, and we seek to understand. And where we don't understand, we just trust God. We say, we say what the man said to Jesus, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Tomorrow, and, and, and this is what I'm praying for you, that you would get into the Word more. Tomorrow in worship, uh, we have a really special worship service planned. Um, it's going to be a worship service slash Bible study uh, because my hope and my prayer, as I've said along in these videos, is I want you in the Word. Um, and I want you in the Word on Sunday and on Monday and on Tuesday. And I want you to do it um, on your own. Um, I, don't, I, I want to help you. <laughs> I want to preach and teach the Word to you, but I also want to, want to encourage and, and equip you to be able to do that on your own. So that's what I hope to begin to do tomorrow as I've begun to do it in these videos. Uh, because this is the truth. We're going to be brutes. We're going to be beasts. We're going to be animals before God um, if we're not in the Word. Um, and so let this be the confession of our heart. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Treasure the Word. Treasure the Word. Love the Word. Seek the Word. Try to understand the Word. Ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom to grasp it. Um, ask Him to give you a mind that trusts, a mind that understands, a mind that loves the Word of God. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Uh, the Lord is with you, and he will always be with you. It's going to be a great day. The Lord be with you all and grant you his peace.